Have you ever wondered why you look like your parents or why your siblings have similar traits? The answer lies in your DNA. DNA, short for deoxyribonucleic acid, is the molecule that carries the genetic instructions for growth, development, function, and reproduction of all known organisms and many viruses. It's like the recipe book for life, containing all the information needed to build and maintain an organism. Think of DNA as a long, twisted ladder, a structure known as the double helix. The rungs of this ladder are made up of a pair of molecules or bases bonded together. There are four types of bases in DNA, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, often abbreviated to A, T, C, and G. What's fascinating is that adenine always pairs with thymine and cytosine always pairs with guanine, forming what we call base pairs. These pairs are like the letters of an incredibly complex code. In fact, there are about 3 billion of these base pairs in the human genome, which is the complete set of DNA in a cell. Now imagine this, the order of these bases is extraordinarily important. Just like the sequence of letters forms words and sentences in a book, the sequence of these bases forms instructions, the genes, for building and maintaining an organism. These instructions tell your body how to make proteins, which carry out all the functions of a cell and organism. And here's the kicker. Over 99.9% .9 of those bases are the same in all people. It's that remaining less than 1% that makes you unique. These slight differences contribute to the diversity of human appearance and health, influencing traits like height, eye color and even susceptibility to certain diseases. So, DNA is the blueprint of life, holding all the instructions your body needs to function. If DNA is the language of life, then genes are the sentences. Imagine a massive book, its pages filled with an intricate and complex language. This book, akin to the Library of Life, contains all the instructions necessary for the creation and functioning of a living organism. That's DNA for you, the blueprint of life. But how do we read this book? How do we understand the language it uses? Enter genes, our life sentences, the interpreters of DNA's language. Genes are, in essence, specific sections of the DNA molecule. They are the fundamental physical and functional units of heredity. Think of them as individual chapters in the book of DNA, each carrying a unique set of instructions. These instructions dictate specific traits like the color of your eyes, the curliness of your hair, or even your susceptibility to certain diseases. Each one of us has tens of thousands of genes, a combination inherited from both our parents. This assortment of genes contributes to our distinct characteristics, making us uniquely us. It's like mixing two colors of paint together. You get a new color that has elements of both original colors, but is uniquely its own hue. But genes don't work alone. They operate in a complex network, interacting not just with each other but also with their environment. It's a dynamic dance, a delicate balance that shapes who we are and how we function. It's also worth noting that not all our genes are active all the time. Some genes switch on and off depending on various factors like our age, our environment, or even our lifestyle. This ability to switch genes on and off, known as gene expression, adds another layer of complexity to our genetic makeup. So, you see, it's not just about the genes we inherit, but also about how these genes are expressed. It's a fascinating interplay of nature and nurture, genetics and environment that shapes our individuality. While DNA gives the instructions, genes are the ones putting those instructions into action. Ever wondered how traits get passed down from generation to generation? This is where heredity comes into play. Imagine life as an intricate relay race, with each generation passing the baton to the next. In the context of genetics, this baton is a bundle of genes, the basic units of heredity. These genes residing in the DNA are responsible for passing on traits from parents to offspring. Whether it's the color of your eyes, the shape of your nose, or even your susceptibility to certain diseases, it's all written in the code of your genes. Now let's delve a little deeper. Each gene has two versions referred to as alleles. One allele comes from your mother, and the other from your father. These alleles can either be dominant or recessive. Think of dominant alleles as the assertive ones in a conversation. They get their way most of the time. If you inherit at least one dominant allele for a particular trait, that trait will be expressed. This is why certain traits seem more common than others. They're likely driven by dominant alleles. On the other hand, recessive alleles are like the quiet ones in a conversation. They only get their say when the dominant alleles are not around. 
This means that a trait driven by a recessive allele will only show if both the alleles you inherit for that trait are recessive. It's this intricate dance between dominant and recessive alleles that contributes to the wonderful diversity we see in humans. Even siblings with the same parents can have different traits because of the unique combination of alleles they inherit. So, the next time you look in the mirror and notice your mother's eyes or your father's smile staring back at you, remember that you're looking at the product of generations of genetic relay races. Heredity is not just about passing on physical traits, it also encompasses the passing on of susceptibility to diseases and other genetic conditions. Heredity is the process that ensures you carry a part of your ancestors with you. Why are we all different even though we share the same basic DNA structure? The answer lies in genetic variation. Genetic variation is the spice of life, adding that dash of uniqueness to every individual. It's the reason why siblings don't look exactly like clones of each other, or why a flock of birds may have different patterns on their feathers. But how does this happen? Well there are a few key factors, mutations, gene flow, and sexual reproduction. Mutations are like typos in the genetic code, they occur randomly when DNA is copied during cell division, leading to changes in the genetic information. While some mutations can be harmful, many are neutral or even beneficial, providing the raw material for evolution. Next up is gene flow, also known as gene migration. In this process, genes are transferred from one population to another, introducing new genetic material. Gene flow can occur through various means like migration or the transfer of pollen from one plant population to another. Last, but certainly not least, is sexual reproduction. Unlike asexual reproduction where offspring are exact copies of the parent, sexual reproduction involves the mixing of genes from two parents. This leads to offspring that are genetically unique, each carrying a different combination of their parents' genes. Now why is all this important? Genetic variation is crucial for survival and evolution. It ensures that populations have the necessary diversity to adapt to changing environments. If a disease strikes, for instance, some individuals may have the genetic makeup to resist it, ensuring the survival of the population. In a broader sense, genetic variation contributes to the vast diversity of life on Earth. It's the reason we have different species, different ecosystems, and different adaptations. It's what makes a jungle different from a desert, a bird different from a fish, and you different from anyone else. So next time you marvel at the variety in nature or the uniqueness of your own features, remember, it's all thanks to the spice of genetic variation. Genetic variation is what makes us unique, contributing to the vast diversity of life on Earth. Imagine a world where diseases could be prevented before they even occur. This could be possible with the help of genetics. In this brave new world of medicine, our understanding of genetics is the key that could unlock a future where disease is an anomaly, not the norm. It's a world where your medical treatment is as unique as you are, tailored to your individual genetic makeup. This is personalized medicine, a burgeoning field that aims to make one-size-fits-all a phrase of the past in healthcare. Imagine walking into a doctor's office and instead of being given a standard prescription, you're given a treatment plan that has been designed specifically for you. This plan takes into account your genetic predispositions, your likelihood of reacting to certain medications, and even your potential for developing specific diseases. This is not a distant dream, but a very tangible reality that is gradually taking shape. But the potential of genetics in medicine extends beyond personalized treatment. Welcome to the world of gene therapy, a revolutionary approach that aims to treat or prevent diseases by modifying or replacing faulty genes. Instead of treating symptoms, gene therapy goes right to the root cause, potentially curing diseases that were once thought incurable. And then there's genetic testing a tool that could allow us to detect diseases early or even before they occur. By identifying specific genetic variants linked to certain diseases, we could intervene early, change lifestyle factors, or even use gene therapy to prevent the disease altogether. Each of these advancements is a piece of the puzzle, a step towards a future where our understanding of genetics allows us to live healthier, longer lives. But it's not just about longevity, it's about improving the quality of life, about understanding our own bodies better, and about embracing the diversity of life. The science of genetics, therefore, carries the potential to change our world, making us healthier and more understanding of the diversity of life.